ಸೊ ನೀನು ಅಲೋ ಮಾಡಿದ ಮೇಲೆ ತಾನೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಲಾಗಿನ್ ಆಗ್ಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಆಗೋದು ಮೊದ್ಲೆ ಆಗ್ಬೋದಾ ಗುಡ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ನೂನ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಐ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಯೋಗ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೆಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಐ ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಮಂಜುನಾಥ್ ಗುರುರಾಜ್ ಟು ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ದ ಸೆಷನ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಎಸ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಶುಭ ಮಧ್ಯಾಹ್ನ ಟು ಆಲ್ dear students and the viewers of this uh, session on yoga and stress management before we start we'll just start one starting prayer so that we invoke the energy in us first okay yes. om sahana vavatu ಸಹನೌನತ್ತು ಸಹವೀರ್ಯಂಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂತಿ ಯೋಗೇನ ಚಿತ್ತ ಪದೇನ ವಾಚಾ ಮಲಂ ಶರೀರ ವೈದ್ಯಕೇನ ಯೋಪಾಕರೋತ್ತಂ ಪ್ರವರ ಮುನೀನಾ ಪತಂಜಲಿ ಪ್ರಾಂಜಲಿರಾನತೋಸ್ಮೀ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ ದ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ವೈಬ್ರೇಷನ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿಸ್ ವೇದಿಕ್ ಚಾಂಟಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ ಟು sage patanjali have a beautiful smile on the face and relax please once again welcome all of you to this session on this yoga and stress management yesterday in my session i just gave you the concept basic fund- fundamental concepts of yoga and how yoga is misconceived that misconceptions and all i just spoke and now we talk on to this stress what is this stress and how many ways are there for this stress to get uh, relieved from this this human life itself is a stressful situation <laughs> the stress starts from the conception itself <laughs> stress is a part and parcel of our life yes all of you must understand this concept of stress as explained in our scriptures concept of stress which is explained in our medical textbooks concept of stress which is explained and experienced in our own life the stress starts from mother's womb itself the challenge is it not see if a married male and female okay they are married from years together but they are not conceived then the stress starts there is it not even after marriage you know see everybody's intention you know to get children and get the family life you know that is the main intention because it is told in uh, shastras aputrasya gatir nasti you know you must have one your of your own representative to carry on your progeny your parampara your family tree is it not so it is a very big expectation from all the family members of the newly married people you know one year later two year later three year later they will start worrying oh why they have not conceived so this is what is the stress starts from there itself before 
the seed is sown in the mother's womb itself see the whole life itself is a stressful situation from where the stress starts in the couples itself okay everything is done okay fine the female conceives then the stress starts for the growth of the baby from inside you know this stressful situation it is a stimulus you know that's what it is a stimulus we have a very day to day stressful situation in our life and we need to cope up with all this stress is part and parcel of our life you cannot say that oh i am i don't want stress at all you cannot say that because that's what it says in bhagavad gita see for every problem of our life bhagavad gita is a very big solution even for stress you know yes i will tell you how this bhagavad gita is going to give you an important aspect of stress you know where arjuna was stressed for that reason only bhagavad gita took its origin bhagavad gita was born because arjuna was stressed yeah why he was stressed because he had to kill his own people see this is how stress started do you mean to say that arjuna did not know or he was not knowing before that he had to kill all his own kith and kin yes he knew very well definitely he knew very well but still you know when he comes on to the battlefield the whole scenario changes like all of you students i will give you a beautiful example like in your own education career like in your engineering career here in bms see you are all prepared very much very nicely you prepare yourself once you enter into the exam examination hall and see the question paper the stress starts there itself you know see you have to compose yourself you should know how to balance all these type of stress the same stress was experienced by arjuna the moment he entered into the battlefield and he saw with whom he has to fight come on let me want to see senayor ubhayor madhye ratham sthapayame achyuta so this is the order given by arjuna <laughs> this is the order given by arjuna to krishna so krishna is a charioteer krishna is a driver of his chariot so like we order to our own drivers you know in our car come on open the door <laughs> so like that arjuna he was having some ahankara in him in that attitude he orders krishna senayor ubhayor madhye ratham sthapayame that me when that me or mera me and mine when that comes you know you get this pride in you that is the false pride there only you are going to get stressed out so that's how when he took krishna knew very well what is there in the mind of arjuna why i am giving this example is because we are all like arjuna in this life battle that mahabharata happened 5000 years ago exactly 5122 years ago okay but we are battling this mahabharata every day to day in our life all the characters if they are representing in our own body there is a arjuna in us there is a bhima sena in us there is a nakula sahadeva dharmaraja in us and there is a krishna in us also and there is there are duryodhana dushyasana kichaka everyone in our body only these are the characters which are going to explain our own guna you know we are all representing all of them to kill one duryodhana there was one bhima who was enough to kill dushyasana one bhima sena was enough but each and every home we have duryodhana and dushyasana every day to day you know very well is it not we have been experiencing all this this is what is stress yes stress is part and parcel of our life and how do we cope up with the stress that's what we are going to see today and how yoga is going to play an important role in keeping our stress in a composed way and receiving all the stimulus you know external stimulus only which is going to stress us our body starting from getting up in the morning you will keep the alarm is it not you are going to keep the alarm at 5 o'clock to get up the moment the bell rings you know you are going to just you are going to hit on that and you are going to go sleep again but when you realize that you have not kept your thinking properly then suddenly you wake up and you are under stress again is it not because time is running 
you have to finish so many activities in the morning and you had planned that way at 5 o'clock to get up but because of our own lethargicness or our own negligence you know we don't get up and we are going to go one hour delay and all your programs from there it is going to get postponed 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 to one hour are you not under stress in this situation definitely all of us are in stress starting up suprabhata to start it with our life with suprabhata from there only we start unless we plan ourselves perfectly meticulously we cannot escape from this stress every day we have day day to day stress then weekly stress then your goal your attention and your final reach of your activities everything is stressful situation so how to cope up with this stress we are going to see now and finally how yoga is going to help finally how yoga i told you yesterday i do i gave you the foundation itself yesterday yoga means it is upaya yoga means it is the solution solution for what problem problem is stress this is what is the stress so our stress starts even before our birth <laughs> before we come out of our mother's womb we are stressed out in mother's womb nine months itself so this is how the stress is going to play an important role in our body in our career and in our life and this is how we are going to see now let us see let us go to the modern medical science and see what this stress is going to be defined as you know what is this stress let us see stress is a situation you know it's a non specific conventional and uh, phylogenetic basic response pattern it says it's a non specific you don't know from where you are going to get the stress you cannot specifically mention that that's why it is called as non specific you can get stress from any direction you know it's a non specific uh, stimulus it is you know it's a non specific conventionalities and phylogenetic phylogenetic means where this is situation which is coming from from all the time you know phylogenetic means it is there in our blood and stress is not that we are seeing now not only this generation from generation to generation previous life also was stressful but situation was different it was not same you know our ancestors they did not take up much stress in their life like how we take up stress now here is it not in all your family you know very well see how your forefathers lived how your father lived how your grandfather lived you know they never felt that stress at all bringing up the family then why do we to bring up one child you know one child education we are stressed out in this society now why such thing so that means our attitude our vision and our expectation everything is going to change now it has changed from 100 years to 50 years to now so that's why stress is a non specific conventional and phylogenetic basic response pattern it is how we respond to the external stimulus you know it's a response pattern how we are going to show our reaction to the stimulus there so this is what is the wonderful uh, quote what we get it you know now we have to prepare this body is it not prepare the body for this physical activity to cope up with the demanding situations yes 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 our life is definitely demanding our demands will never end uh, this is what is our attitude has changed the generation to generation the attitude is changed our forefathers how they lived they were very composed they did not they were not so greedy you know we are becoming greedy in our day to day life activities see there is a beautiful saying yesterday i told you that saying you know irodella va bittu iradudarege tudiyude jeevana in our kannada we say this such a beautiful our sahitya has given this so nicely he has said what you have you are not happy with that what you have you are not satisfied with that what you don't have you are going behind that iruvudella babittu iradudaredige tudiyude jeevana it is told that is what to prepare the body for physical activity to cope up with this demanding situation life has become so demanding you know our demands will never end 
If one demand is met, another two demands are going to come in our life. See, this is what is the situation which makes us to fight with the situation or to flight. You know, <laughs> you are going to escape from the situation stressful, you run away from the situation, or you are going to fight and uh, face the situation and uh, receive whatever comes to on its way, whether success or failure, it doesn't matter. You fight. Fighting that attitude, you know, that is the most important condition where each and every human being must develop. Flight is a situation where you are going to escape and run away from the situation. See, there is a hormone in our body. I'll tell you, which is going to make this flight situation. Suddenly we are talking here, you know, suddenly one tiger or one lion comes here. I will jump from here to there behind 20 feet. It's not, which is not possible in our normal activity life. How does that happen? Because of that adrenaline rush, we call it as. It's a hormone. Adrenaline is a hormone that makes us to co either cope up with the situation yes. or to just run away from the situation. This is the hormone, flight or fight reaction. This is what is the most important thing in our life. How we are going to face the situation. So... Then what we do? What are all the situations which is going to make our body changes when you are caught up in the stress, you know? See, every time I can take the example of a student only because I am addressing all of you, the students, you know? You are always stressed with the atmosphere wherever you are studying. Yes. Not all people will get the same type of stress you are all going to face different type of different kind of stress in different situations you know what are all the common changes which are going to happen in our body when you are stressed out your sugar level is going to shoot up <laughs> your body sugar level is going to shoot up that is blood sugar level when you are continuously constantly you are stressed you know see this is what is the basic response of the body sugar level will hike your breath rate will increase, is it not? When you come and look into the question paper in the examination day, on the first day of examination, definitely all these are going to make high. But if you are well prepared to face it, you know, how you make your mind, you know, you can calm down, you can bring down everything. Because all of you have passed all this stage in your high school, in your plus two, and you have come up here in the degree level. So you know how to cope up with the situations. But still, you know, these are the things which you are going to be aware now and how we are going to tackle this situation. Sugar level is going to high. Breath rate is going to increase. Your heart rate is going to increase. Definitely. Your blood pressure is increased. Yeah. Your perspiration. That means you are going to sweat down. Yeah. Sweat. Sweat is going to come out from the body when you are tensed or when you are in stressful situation. You are going to sweat out because of this involvement. How much you are involved, that shows your involvement. If you are really too much involved into that, you know, if little bit goes wrong, you know, you are going to be very much stressed. That is what is going to make you to perspire. That is perspiration, sweating, we call it as. Perspiration is a medical term there. Okay. And saliva. Yeah. You are going to salivate more. That saliva is going to get produced more in our body when you are stress reaction. The stress reaction, what is going to happen in you, that's going to make you to increase, increase your body, all these functions, you know. So that's how. Then, yeah, this is these are the other kind of situations where we are going to see the other side in the body, sugar level, perspiration, breath rate, heart rate, everything we saw. Now here, stiffness of the muscles also. Yeah, this is going to induce stiffness in the muscles when you are stressed out. Definitely, the muscles are going to become rigid. You can't do, you can't move your uh, muscles wherever you want to wish, you know. All of a sudden, the muscle catch and all. These are all due to the stressful situation. Your pupils are going to become dilated. Yes, you should know a little bit of science, biology. All of you are engineering students here. But you have come with the uh, science background there, where biology, where pupils means, in our eyes, we have this pupil is going to get dilated. 
when you are stressed out pupils are going to get dilated i will just give you an example of this how this pupils are going to get dilated when you are surprised with any situation or when you are going to open up your eyes very big you know the pupils are going to get dilated but uh, there is a situation where your pupils are going to get dilated and fixed that is only in the death <laughs> when the soul leaves the body the pupils are going to be very sensitive to the light you know where the doctors are going to put torch on first to the eyes even if a person becomes unconscious whether the person is alive or not if you want to see you know you will see the pulse you may not get the pulse rate also you will see the heart so that is heart beats and all with stethoscope even if you cannot make out the heart beat and all respiration and all then the doctor will see through the torch because that is the thing which is going to make you whether you are alive or not because when you open up the eyes even the person or the patient may close his eyes open up the eyes and put the torch if the pupils are going to react you know then only we call it as the person is alive even in all his parameters are not traceable then this is going to be very very sensitive in our body that shows when you put the torch to the light uh, the our eyes are exposed to the torch light you know the pupils are going to get constricted and dilated when you put the torch it's going to constrict when you remove the light it's going to dilate but when you put the torch and still if the there is no reaction in the pupils or dilated and fixed that is the sign of death that is the sign of death so here in a stressful situation definitely pupils are dilated but dilated not fixed <laughs> it's going to get constricted again dilate again all these so this is the situation in our body this is the this is how our body reacts to the stress all senses are frightened in awareness yes definitely we are going to get frightened in the stressful situation we don't know what's going to happen next because we have not seen the next thing you know after stress what is the what will be the consequences so that's why we are all frightened all our sense senses are going to be you know they are not going to be functioning so efficiently in stressful situation so that is not so how how this we are going to accomplish so what is the solution for this you know the, this is what is the situation which is going to happen in our brain see our brain has got this uh, reaction brain is a an organ which is situated in the top of the body shiraha uttama angam anganam it is told in ayurveda <laughs> top most organ of the body is the brain you know where, where it is situated see where is the reaction happening in our body to the stress any stressful situation you know in our brain base of the brain that is in the hypothalamus you know that is the place where the chemical reaction is going to happen and emotional cortex what we call it as anger fear tension everything you know that's going to get originated from there brain is an important organ which is going to manage all other system see if you in biology you might have seen how this human body is working there are many systems in our human body we may just count it as 10 to 12 systems are there all other systems if it has to function perfectly this nervous system is very important brain is very important to control all other systems if this system goes wrong all of your system will not function properly at all so that is the reason why when we are stressed when we are stressed out so we are going to see these reactions your hypothalamus sympathetic nerves parasympathetic nerves they are going to help us sympathetic nerves are going to stimulate the body parasympathetic nerves are going to reduce the relaxation that is what relax it is going to make us relax so this is how sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves are going to play an important role you know this uh, sympathetic nerves they are going to constrict the blood that is the blood vessels are going to get constricted forceful contraction of the heart your heart beat is going to increase we saw in the previous slide you know so they heart beat how it is going to increase because of this contraction of the heart forcibly it is going to contract your heart beat everything is going to increase the muscles heart muscles are pumped up it is going to pump up more blood 
to all parts of the body to cope up the situation of the stress. This is what is going to happen. So we have in nervous system, autonomous nervous system, you know, so where sympathetic and parasympathetic. Sympathetic is going to stimulate, parasympathetic is going to make you relax in general. This is how we see. Central nervous system, you know, the main brain has got two hemispheres. That is right hemisphere, left hemisphere, the big brain and the small brain. Big brain is called as cerebrum. Small brain is called as cerebellum. I'm not going into the details of the anatomy here. Just we are concentrating on the stress, how the origin of stress, how the chemicals are going to change in our brain and how we are going to react to this kind of situation. So here, sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. In the system of yoga, how do we consider this sympathetic and parasympathetic system? This is all modern, you know, modern aspect of uh, this nervous system. But in our yoga shastra, what do we call it as? You know, this sympathetic and parasympathetic. Ida and Pingala Nadi. We call it as Ida and Pingala. So Sushumna Nadi is the spinal cord. See the spinal cord. Brain has brainstem, midbrain, pons, and medulla oblongata. This is how the base of the brain we are going to see the different structures. You know, midbrain, pons, and medulla oblongata. That, constitu that constitutes brainstem. Brainstem is going to go out of the skull. When it goes out of the skull, then we call it as spinal cord. That is only called as Sushumna Nadi. So please, you must know all this uh, conversant modern terms and even the yogic concept because we are talking about yoga here. We are not just here to expertise you in uh, modern structural details and functional details here. How yoga is going to be? What are the yogic way of understanding this organs in our body? Because yesterday I gave you the basic conceptual notion of what yoga is, how yoga is going to make us understand what is life. So that's what here, sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system they are considered as Ida and Pingala. Ida means the left side of the spinal cord and the right side is called as Pingala. So in, even in our nose, we have Ida Nadi and Pingala Nadi. So this is the right nostril, which we call it as Pingala and uh, the left one is called as Ida. Okay, Ida, Pingala and Sushumna. So that's how you need to have a comparative knowledge. Otherwise, you know, if you don't have this comparative knowledge or Samanmaya, then you may not understand what, he, what is modern medicine is trying to say and how this our ancient uh, Acharyas, how did they come to understanding? We have to bring somewhere in the same platform, in the same stage, we have to do this Samanmaya of modern and the ancient. That's how we need to, need of the hour is to do this contemplation of both ancient and modern. The uh, concepts of our ancients and how these modern medical concepts, they are going to stand in the same stage there. And we need to do Samanvaya Jnana. Otherwise, we may not understand what our ancients are trying to say. See, this is the big gap. There is a big gap between modern and the ancient people. See, modern and the ancient people, they blame each other, you know. Modern people say the ancient people as, oh, they don't know anything about science. And ancient people, Acharyas, you know, those people who are orthodox people, they say, oh, these modern people, they are all Buddhists. They don't know anything about our ancient wisdom. And they say they blame each other, actually. They blame each other saying as you are a Kopa Manduka. You know what is Kopa Manduka? A frog in a well. <laughs> when we say it as a frog in a well, to me, both of them are frog in a well, unless and until they come and exchange their views, modern and ancient, and bring the new ray of knowledge for the present and upcoming generation. So this is what is life here, what we have to understand. So that's how autonomous nervous system, which is divided here into sympathetic and parasympathetic. So that's how we are going to understand this concept of stress. So this is how it is going to cope up. So, so how this stress is going to make this uh, understanding, mainly this gland. Endocrine system is very important in this. Pituitary gland, the cortex of this pituitary, so that is very important in controlling this adrenaline. So then thyroxin, the thyroid gland. So the growth hormone, which is called as pituitary gland. Yeah, pituitary gland is considered as a growth hormone. Pituitary gland is going to control all other glands in our body. How many glands are there in our body? See, you might have studied in your science. <laughs> there are seven ductless glands in our body. 
you know it is there only in the textbook but you don't know where where all these are situated in our body that is the biggest thing you know you need to realize because yoga is going to speak about this endocrine system only without the understanding of endocrine system in our body you will never understand what yoga is because yoga is very closely associated with this endocrinal secretions and endocrinal uh, actions which are many of these endocrine systems are not properly understood by modern people at all because i can give you one important gland which is accepted by everyone out of these seven ductless glands you know thymus gland and pineal gland these are the two glands even they accept in modern physiology we don't know much about the functions of these glands that is one of the most important thing yes we need to accept things where if we don't know we should say that we don't know much about that but yoga is going to open up there in understanding what is this thymus gland what is this pineal gland here right so just i will i'm just giving you how this uh, knowledge of endocrine system is going to take you to understand what yoga is okay now we need to balance here when these are the endocrine systems hormones which are involved in our stressful situation you know stress is imbalance you know we need to balance it that is what is these hormones are secreted exactly at the regular interval in our body to face the stressful situation but how do you balance it this stress that's what we call it as homeostasis yeah that's homeostasis is a concept of the process where the body itself knows actually how to balance it yeah our body knows very well how to cope up with the situation you yourself your body has got that auto correction you know some of the things are auto corrected in our body but you have to respond in a proper manner for the stressful situation if you are reaction or the, our response is in such a way that it is going to worsen the situation then you are going to be imbalanced always we will be imbalanced there you know how do we balance it from the balanced state so imbalanced state is only called as stressful situation and balanced state we call it as homeostasis okay this is a reaction yeah it is a mandatory reflex for every survival you know you are going to scratch your head it goes out of your control means then you are going to lose your behavior only a person who cannot cope up a stressful situation he will go mad nowadays software companies <laughs> for example to say is it not we are getting such a stressful situation from the employees you know where they come to doctor every time to cope up how to cope up with the demanding uh, situation demanding uh, you know they expect too much from the employees how to cope up with this yeah we need to that's why now counseling has become a great field there where yoga is going to make everyone perfectly calm cool down understand the situation understand the atmosphere there then reaction how to be how do we react everything is going to be a matter so we need to do this counseling otherwise we people the reaction this is a reflex where every survival you know we have to survive when we have to survive in this life stressful situation the person goes like this that's what he is wearing tie and he is wearing coat everything but still he is stressed out in his life you know this stressful situation we need to if we don't you know manage this system you know to regain its normalcy stress is going to completely push you down completely you will be stressed down and you are going to be completely pushed under the stress and the individual is running away from here see this is the stress is a big hand you know like you are killing some uh, <laughs> mosquito is it not mosquito is it here and you are going to just put one tap bol ke mar denge na this is what is stressful situation is going to make an individual to lose his life only so we need to manage this stress otherwise it makes uh, no sense in <laughs> living with this stress life it happens in modern life is it not large number of demanding situation high sensitivity and sharpness perfectionist yeah all these demanding situations are going to make you stressed out 
very sensitive people you know they are always stressed people who wants to be always perfectionate they are very crazy and they are obsessive about perfection you know even little bit so there are many students i have if they don't get 100 out of 100 no they become completely stressed yes. <laughs> so this is the situation demand perfection is like that is also crazy sometimes that drives you into the stress there if you don't score 100 out of 100 then what will happen if you get 99 you are stressed out ah oh, this is something extremes of your demanding situation yeah this target to be achieved all these are for software people and you also keep your own target in your life you know these are all going to be very stressful situation that's what increased hypertension we call it as bp increased sugar level we call it as diabetic mellitus so joint stiffness muscle back pain muscular pain arthritis these are all the ending situation of the stress so when you land up in hypertension the cause is stress when you land up yourself nomenclated as a name, number number name plated you as a diabetic then it is the stress diabetes is not caused because of your father mother having diabetes now each and every demanding situation is going to push you into the well of this diabetic why because of stress stress induced diabetes we call it as so this is going to be very very important situation back pain unexplained back pain muscular pain you don't have anything you don't have any cause but still you feel oh my back is aching my muscles are aching oh this is something you know this is unexplainable stress you know we call it as and even arthritis sometimes they are going to end up in stress situation so and your digestive tract is the one which is going to make a perfect uh, response here where you are going to end up in acid reaction in your body that means hyperacidity is the symptom the more you get involved into more stressful situation you know your secretions from your guts you know that is from the bile secretion pancreatic and your hcl hydrochloric acid secretion everything it's going to be increased in our body and make our gi tract to end up in ulcers gastric ulcers you know gastric ulcer duodenal ulcer there are so many places where ulcers are going to happen even from starting from esophagus only from the anna nala itself esophageal ulcer and from the gastric ulcer duodenal ulcer peptic ulcer and see all these are the things which are going to make you the end situation of the stress okay uh, yeah this is going to this is the physical thing what i told you all this now the psychological thing ah uh, you are going to work late night you know and you are more obsessive into your work where you are going to do day night second shift then third shift night shift everything you are going to do but you are not giving more concentration on your family but that makes you workaholic it's not just workaholic it's going to make you work obsessive you know obsession in the work difficulty in making choices where if you are not balanced in your work situation if you are obsessed with your work then definitely you land up in this uh, difficulty in making choices to decide what is correct what i am doing is right or not see every day i will tell you how to de-stress yourself in all such situation before we go into the uh, how the solution for all this thing i will tell you every day night you just think what i have done you just write it down writing down the diary is going to let you all your emotions out this is the one way of de-stressing yourself the best way the best way to de-stress yourself is to write down the situation write down the statements put it in the form of statements and write down the diaries you know writing a diary is also a very good habit habit you should cultivate in your students life whether you are in career life or professional life or whatever the life you are leading writing down you know it brings all your emotions are penned down you are going to pen it down and when you read it as a personal diary you know you are going to stress relieved yes the stress is going to relieve when you write down this is one of the way that's why we counsel the psychiatric patients you know write down write down what are all your problems and when you have the habit of writing down a diary you know you will never feel stressed in your life so one important 
from this webinar what i am telling you is write down everything day to day activities whatever you have done introspection of your daily activities introspecting yourself that is the most important thing which is going to give a very good uh, session for you every day write down that is going to make you de stressed in your life so when you are obsessed with your work you know you are going to end up in difficulty in making choices you cannot make any safe decisions is it not excessive daydreaming you are going to become a daydreamer so all these are difficult situations you know indiscretion in the sexual activities you know sudden increase in uh, drinking and smoking all these are stressful situation when a person is stressed out he finds an easy way he thinks that by smoking and by alcohol drinking you know you are going to forget the stressful situation the more you drink you know the more you are going to stress so you may for temporarily you may forget everything but later on you know the problem remains there only you know so instead it is going to increase the other side effects of your all these activities that's what inappropriate anger you are going to become angry for everything you know whatever is there in the office you know work set tension and situation you are going to throw it on your family oh this is something you know inappropriate that's what we call it as inappropriate thing when you are not appropriately using your anger that means that makes the situation very worse you are going to be making each and every family member in a stressful situation so these are the activities where you are going to make yourself to land up in a wrong place here inappropriate anger excessive mistrust of the associates you know <laughs> colleagues also you are not going to trust anyone <laughs> this is a kind of see this type of analysis you know it can happen in any way in any type of office or in a small office in a college or in any other areas also these are all applicable for every way you know you are not going to trust anyone of your colleague or mistrust you are going to develop all these these are the side effects what i am telling you analyzing all these missing appointments and deadlines you are going to miss all your appointments all your deadlines you are going to put a deadline tomorrow i should complete then you are going to postpone it today after tomorrow also you are not going to complete you are going to postpone it again so this postponing habit and missing the appointments or meeting the demand for situation you are going to postpone it and there you are going to land up in further stress there yeah you are going to not follow up the dates properly <laughs> you cannot feeling worthless in life you are going to feel difficulty in working with others you know you cannot cope up with the situation prolonged brooding sudden reversal of usual behavior yeah your behavior is going to change these are all the stressful situation what is going to make you you know yeah once upon a time you were very efficient you were all, you were praised by everyone all of a sudden you know efficient worker becoming careless you know ah uh, why such type of situation are going to arise when you are praised by everyone but all of a sudden the stress is going to change your habit and behavior and your work nature is also going to change the carelessness and you will definitely become aloof you don't want to talk to anyone aloofness of a friend you were supposed to be very friendly all of a sudden the person withdraws himself and he is not going to talk to anyone cheating yes you are going to cheat yourself there dishonesty you were supposed to be very honest person in life in work everything all of a sudden turning to be dishonest you know upright and straight forward person you are supposed to be and suddenly you are going to change from that you know that is what is the situation now these are all the situation i explained to you now how do you manage this you know checklist you have to do the checklist ah uh, what is that is what i told you write down write down you even if whatever the activity you do you analyze it by writing down what is the checklist what you have to see in this stressful situation compute your life change risk you know life change units yeah like what is this mild unit moderate risk above 300 is highly risk you know 
this is how stress symptom checklist is there you have to know this checklist and the point is given if you are falling in 152 150 to 199 points there you are mildly stressed out you are falling down in 200 to 299 uh, points there you are moderate risk stress and above 300 you are highly risky so this is how then how to do this can we stop at this you know then where is the solution for all this we are going to analyze our situation yes yeah i am stressed out then find the solution for this sir yeah now this yoga yoga is the final thing and before going to yoga finally recognition is half the solution first identify your problem first identifying your problem itself is half of the solution 50% of your solution is relieved only by proper recognition recognizing properly is going to make your stress 50% is going to be solved here uh, what is that that defines you know stress as an imbalance mental and physical levels two kind of situation here where we are going to decide here at a physical level and as the mental level imbalance is happening in the body that is somatic level we call it as soma somatic and where mental level psychic level yeah so so we call it as psychosomatic psychosomatic means where involvement of your body and mind both are involved in this so where imbalances are happening at the physical level at the energy level and at the mental level at the emotional level everywhere these are all going to make you to stress out so now how this is understood in our scripture or literature see we have this five kind of layer please understand this human body is made up of five important sheets annamaya pranamaya manomaya vijnanamaya and anandamaya so totally from modern we have taken a u turn to the philosophical way of understanding this human body so this philosophical way of understanding this human body means we know that we are made up of cells cell is the basic unit of the body yes we have different types of cells in our body but as per our scriptures you know taittiriya upanishad which is going to give us this concept of this annamaya pranamaya manomaya vijnanamaya anandamaya these are the five sheets where we are composed of even ayurveda says where we also accept the jiva kosha there but our main concept of understanding this human body is sharira indriya sattva and atma unless you are going to integrate the knowledge of ayurveda with yoga neither you will understand what is ayurveda nor you will understand what is yoga okay you need to understand how the human body is composed of human life is composed of forget about human life at least whatever the life is you know if we call that there exists life you need to have these four important concepts sharira indriya sattva and atma without these four concepts there is no life at all sharira indriya sattva atma sanyoga dhari jeevitam nitya gascanamandascha paryaya ayuruchyate the life is the perfect combination of sharira indriya sattva and atma sharira means body indriya means sense organ sattva means mind and atma means soul so with this combination there are five sheets of layer that is only we call it as annamaya pranamaya manomaya vijnanamaya anandamaya mame shuddhyantam jyotiraham viraja vipapma bhuyasanna swaha this is from taittiri upanishad oh my goodness i learned when i was just a 12 13 year old boy but i know now how to apply this here how to apply this to this yoga we are i learned when i was very small but you know i didn't even give any concentration there why should i learn all this <laughs> but when i came to teach in the university after finishing my graduation and when i stepped into this teaching profession you know there i started are i learned this very long back but i was not knowing how to apply this see this is how the knowledge of taittiriya upanishad comes into picture how our human body is composed annamaya pranamaya annamaya means it is anatomy and physiology 
Anatomy is structural details. Physiology is functional details. Both structural and functional details of this human body come under this Annamaya Kosha. We are at the physical level only. Physical level is called as Annamaya. Pranamaya means energy level. Yeah, we need to know. We know that we are energetic. We have this energy every day when you sleep, you know. Every day morning when you get up and you do all your activities, come to the work spot and execute all your works, you are stressed out, you are facing all stressful situations and in the late night you go home and when you sleep, next day you are going to gain the same energy. Where did you get that energy from? You did not take any vitamin injection or any pills. No, what you did was just sleep. Sleep is a, such a thing, you know which is going to give you back the double energy what you have lost in the previous day. So what you have done physically or mentally, you are stressed out, you know, the moment you sleep. Sleep is one of the important aspects of our life. If you don't sleep, then you cannot live only. Nidra yattam sukham dukkam pushtim karshye balabalam rushata klibata gnanam agnanam jivitam na charaka says this. Please know this. Very important. So that's why we are living. Why we are living? Because we are sleeping every day. That's why Annamaya Pranamaya, Annamaya Kosha is getting auto-correction because of any stressful situation. When you sleep, you know, all your stress are going to completely becoming neutralized. Yeah, sleep has got that power. Sukha, Dukkha, Pushti, Karshya, Bala, Abala, Rushata, potency of an individual, klibata, impotency, everything is determined by sleep. If you get a good sleep, you will be very happy in your life. If you don't get sleep, you will run to doctor, doctor, I am not getting sleep. So sleep, annamaya kosha, that is anatomy and physiological level, at you are going to get all the solution here. So that is what annamaya. Pranamaya means energy level, that you are gaining energy because of your sleep. You know, so this is the beautiful definition you can find only in Ayurveda, not in any other modern medical science. Definitely. What is sleep? How can you define it? It's defined sleep. Yadatu manasiklante karmatmanaha klavan vitaha. Vishaye bhyo nivartante. When you are going to get completely withdraw your senses from the external world, that means you are sleeping. <laughs> so beautiful. Vishaye bhyo nivartante tada swapati manava. That's how you are going to sleep. Sleep is another one beautiful way letting out the stress. Yes, this is how. How this is going to get accomplished, that I am going to tell you. So this is how Annamaya Kosha. Pranamaya, energy level. That's what I told you. That energy, we have our body. God has given us that immunity. God has given us that natural immunity to correct this body ourselves. But we have to streamline it perfectly through our own lifestyle. Lifestyle happens to be the most important aspect in, in uh, curing this stress. You know, you have to follow a perfect disciplined lifestyle. That is only called as yoga. Yoga means don't think that something is going to, you are going to get something from somewhere. No. Disciplining your life itself is yoga. Okay. So, Annamaya Pranamaya. Manomaya is the third sheath where mental level your mind is an important entity. Definitely. Is it not? Mind is going to be the most important. Manaha ekatvam anutvancha. It is told in Ayurveda. It is only one. Ekatva and anu. It is subtle. It is there everywhere. Yeah. Your mind situation or mindful situation. What is going to make you to analyze things, you know. That's what it is. Manomaya kosha. We are all... The third layer, Annamaya, Pranamaya, Manomaya. Vijnanamaya is the intellectual sheath. Yes, we are composed of this intellectual sheath. We use our intellectuality as per our capacity, as per our IQ. We are going to use our intelligence. Yeah, in all the way, this intellectual sheath is going to come under this stress also. Yes. Then finally, when you are going to go beyond this stressful situation of Annamaya, Pranamaya, Manomaya, Vijnanamaya, then you are going to enter into the final sheath, Anandamaya Kosha. Anandamaya Kosha means that is completely de-stressed situation. You can never become stressed at all in this level. Soul is situated in this level. Annama. That is Anandamaya Kosha. Ananda is that is the nature of the soul. 
but we are bound by these four other layers that is the reason why we are stressed once you enter into this anandamaya kosha so where you are really blissful and blessful <laughs> with the bless with the blessings you are going to be blissful so bliss is going to get only when you are blessed not everyone <laughs> not everyone will get the bliss this blissful situation you know when only when only blessed people are going to get this so that's why this is anandamaya portion so our main attempt is to go to this from the all stressful situation these are the five layered you know mental restlessness what we are going to see is it not pranamaya portion the vital sheath it's like a clear lake uh, you you can, you are going to drop one stone into that and you are going to cause the waves in the mental level you know breathing breathing that is becoming a hazard that is prana disturbed prana is going to make you completely stressful wrong direction wrong quantities constrictions of the body you know constriction everywhere even in the physiological level and you are going to create mental blocks in our life this is what is going to make us in all this annamaya pranamaya manomaya vijnanamaya okay what is the cause for this uh, annamaya is adhi <laughs> you know adhi and vyadhi this is the situation where we are going to adhi the prana where annamaya kosha where the imbalance in this human body so that leads to the imbalance of the prana in the pranic level that is what is the stress reaction from the adhi to vyadhi so adhi is at the mental level you know so at the mental level root itself the imbalance is going to happen and how you are going to get stressed out and at the physical level you are going to express or manifest all these symptoms what all we discussed just now is it not that's what stress reaction is going to lead imbalance in the annamaya kosha and imbalance in the pranamaya kosha prana is energy level your energy see there are many people who are bubbling with energy every day how do they get that energy yeah they are bubbling with energy we see many students you know they are always enthusiastic enthusiastic that that means they are very well established in knowing how to balance this situations they are always how to accept things you know in life how do you accept things whatever comes on your way see you need to have some philosophy in your life if you don't follow any philosophy you know you cannot be happy one or the other people they will be following one or the other philosophy definitely to cope up with this stressful situation psychic phase we have these uh, psychic phase that is in the manomaya kosha psychological warnings all the behavior changes just i told you psychosomatic phase is the second phase pranamaya kosha where hypertension tremor palpitation psychosomatic means our behavioral changes which is because of our structural variation that's what it is called as you know so where all the body organs are affected with this stress the target organs are stomach that is acidity symptom the thyroid that is what is behavioral changes you are going to tremors and all you are going to get it you know organic phase this is how uh, where annamaya kosha in that all the target is organs where peptic ulcer is going to end up with and uh, with asthma bronchial asthma that's what it is written as br asthma <laughs> bronchial asthma it is okay diabetes and coronary blocks all these are due to so what is the solution for this integrated approach of yoga therapy for total reversal of stress ailments integrated approach what is this integrated approach main stress so if you go with the other solutions like smoking it's going to increase the stimulation alcohol it is going to end up in cirrhosis of liver that's not going to give you any solution what is the integrated approach okay so tremendous power within us we have we have to utilize this tremendous power whatever is there within us our power what is there in us you know that's going to be utilized that's what we need to utilize so that's what we said each soul is potentially divine we are not knowing the divinity of our own self this is told by swami vivekananda so that's what what swami vivekananda said you know arise awake stop not till the goal is reached it is told by swami vivekananda 
बट एक्चुअली इट इज टोल्ड इन कठोपनिषद उत्तिष्ठता जाग्रता प्राप्य वरान्निभोदता क्षुरस्य धारा निशिता दुरत्य दुर्गम पथस्थत कवयो वदन्ति इट इज टोल्ड इन उपनिषद द स्टेट सेम स्टेटमेंट फ्रॉम उपनिषद इज टेकन बाय स्वामी विवेकानंद ही सेड ईच सोल इज पोटेंशियली डिवाइन Every soul is potentially divine. We don't know. We are not realizing the divinity what is there in us. We don't know our own potentials. That's what even Nimhan says. Tremendous power within us in the brain research. Yes, Nimhan is the institute which is National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences, where it is the world-renowned such uh, organization in our Bangalore, where they research and they say that only two percent of our brain capacity we are using. 98% we are not using at all imagine this is what is going to make you completely puzzled out here why we are not able to use this 98% you know only 2% we are utilizing if we utilize all these you know will be somewhere that's what is mentioned this is what is personality development you need to do so the total quality control what is this total the tool the total quality of this life if you want to improve recognition is very important stimulation and relaxation of the whole body that is with the annamaya kosha and pranamaya kosha stimulate and relax stimulate and relax alternate doing this stimulation and relaxation is going to de stress you first thing what i told you is writing down your diary second thing is alternate stimulation and relaxation stimulate your do any asana you know doing shavasana only you just tighten 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 your toes tighten your calf muscle tighten your knees tighten your thighs tighten your abdomen tighten your chest then tighten your neck tighten your face and then slowly relax this is all alternative stimulation and relaxation is going to give you the most important relief from the stress stimulation and relaxation this is the combined effect stimulation builds attention you know when you are going to stimulate you are going to be attentive then so relaxation releases the tension that's how the blocks which are caused by your stress are going to be released this is how alternate stimulation and relaxation in yoga what we are going to use it instant relaxation therapy irt drt deep relaxation therapy quick relaxation therapy qrt irt drt and qrt these are all the procedures see i am just introducing now for you how to de stress yourself to know the procedure of this irt drt qrt and we have smet program self management of excessive tension how you are going to manage that we are going to plan for you definitely <laughs> our principal sir has quoted that we should utilize this introduce this to even for the juniors from the first year just now when i was discussing with the principal sir he just told we shall carry on this as a series of knowledge exchange program and definitely with all this you know i can make you to demo with my students and definitely you can feel the benefit of all this irt qrt drt and smet program so this is how you are going to relax and recognize the regions of your stress then you are going to relax there continuous stimulation alternate stimulation and relaxation stimulation and relaxation that's what that recognizes there so let go the relaxation to continue continue then internal awareness you are going to do this is the flow chart that's how you are going to enter into the bliss bliss path there see this is how when you are relaxing all your you know stagnations or stagnations are nothing but stress when you are going to stimulate then you are accumulating then relaxing you are going to release so recognition of your stimulation and let go all the reaction of all the relaxation and the emotional content will come out so then you are going to enter into this area of blissful situation definitely this is the flow chart how you read it yeah so how do how do you catch this ladder so stimulation relaxation ladder stimulation stimulation then second stage is maintenance of that state and now the relaxation alternately stimulation then maintenance and then relaxation this is how we can tell you all this in a graphic way and we have already done many research papers and keeping all the control you know studies we have done many papers 
and we have written many papers in many journals in our research anveshana department there where they have completely they have gone into the depth of all these uh, uh, stimulus relaxation and alternate thing and there are all the ancient concepts whatever is told in our yoga like you know pranayama dhyana dharana all these things you know what are the concepts how do we distress ourselves so that's how stressing up and up and up in our in our life there is no respite <laughs> definitely our life is always going with demand and demand no progress ah uh, after years of japa you know japa means where simply people know to just repeat the words no that is not japa japa with involvement without involving yourself in the repetition or without knowing the contemplation of that japa do you know what is the meaning of japa jakare janma vichedah pakare papanashana <laughs> it is told japa is an abbreviation word so many people who do japa they say that i do gayatri japa i do that japa this japa what is the meaning of japa jakare janma vichedah pakare papanashana so it is like a, an abbreviation nobody knows they think that only english is an abbreviation language but sanskrita is a abbreviation language ja and pa they have their own meaning jakare janma vichedah when you are going to repeat it as many times as possible in your life you are going to get liberated from the cycle of birth and death that's what it is told ja means janma vichedah pakare papanashanam all your sins are going to completely negative feeling sins means don't think that papa punya all these the papa punya is positive energy well, papa means negativity that's all all your negative vibrations are going to pakare papa nashana means your negative attitude negative thinking is going to be completely removed that is what is called as japa even after so many uh, years of japa only stagnation is happening means because because without any contemplation because they were not knowing what is japa only definition so that's how stimulate and relax allow the relaxation to continue to the deep internal awareness oh this is what is you need to experience all this just if i present it in a powerpoint <laughs> it is not sufficient you need to experience it when you are going to be shown as a module with the practice from one individual then you are going to practice in that way all this should happen in a offline mode not online mode where we are going to correct you where you are going to do wrong so then you are going to experience all this you know so that's why don't hold on to your strong likes and dislikes open up just allow you to freely allow the emotions to go out you know so then only you are going to grow fast by releasing the stress you know so recognizing is very important changes blood flow and bp is going to change allow the relaxation to continue bp is going to decrease by doing this alternate stimulation and relaxation mode that's what i told you irt qrt and drt these are all the three procedures what we have made what is that irt what is the drt what is that qrt everything i can tell you when we make a good you know like seminar like a, a one week seminar where we are going to concentrate on only irt drt and qrt and stressful changes how we can uh, feel it or experience everything about this so relaxation of muscles muscles has to happen relaxation of our body relaxation of our mind and finally where we started it is increase in blood pressure increase in heart rate increase in breath rate you know the respiration rate increase in perspiration increase in everything in our body bp sugar everything now we are coming to the area where alternate relaxation first thing is write down all your activities that's going to distress you first thing. then instant relax stimulation and relaxation and with japa japa means knowingly doing japa not that just repeating om shri krishna ay namaha om shri krishna ay namaha om shri raghavendra ay namaha or om shri gurave namaha just you repeat it means it is not going to give you but the vibration of that bija mantra itself is going to help you but with the understanding and with the involvement where you are going to reach to the stage of ajapa japa ajapa japa that is what is called as ajapa japa means even when you are not doing it in a 
practical way, but your mind and your conscious is completely involved in Gora's Mithila. That is called as Ajapa Ajapa. All these are the depth of this relaxation techniques, you know, where your body muscles are going to relax and your blood pressure is going to decrease. This is in a short way, just I have given you. So thank you very much for your understanding. And definitely, if given another opportunity, I can bring my students and demo, give a demo as discussed by the principal sir and our Shivram sir. Definitely, we are going to give you in a module like, you know, like in a credit like it. This is going to be a very good exploring session in future. Definitely. So let us hope for the best by God willing everything. So we shall carry this connection and the relationship to further in each and every semester, you will be having credit like, you know, where you are going to take the benefit of yoga scientifically with all the analysis, not just by closing your eyes and listening to everything. You are going to question definitely in an offline mode, not in an online mode where you are there 1500 and many of them are there. If you ask question one by one question only, then it is going to become a very big decision. So just to stop all those uh, problems, we have made it online only one way. So when we come offline, definitely you have so many things to ask, so many things to clarify. And we are ready to give in a proper way, definitely. Thank you very much for this session. I thank principal sir, vice principal sir, and our great friend Shivram Reddy sir for giving this opportunity, doing a lot of revolutionary changes in this campus. Just I came two days for this campus and I am here just for a few hours, you know, but still I'm very much impressed by the changes, how it was and how it is and how it will be the goal also. Very nice. So God bless all of you. Thank you very much for your patient listening. Let us close the session by Shanti Mantra. Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha, Sarve Santu Niramaya, Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu, Ma Kaschid Dukhabad Bhavet, Om Shanti 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 God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, my dear student friends, uh, is all together, we require a yeah, good health. Yes, definitely. To get that, we need to cultivate good habits. Yes. Good habits means whatever we require, that has to be cultivated in our life. And also it has to be practiced. We used to say that practice makes man perfect. Yes. For everything, we require practice. For everything, even for good handwriting also we require a practice. Yes, that's why cultivate good habits, then practice accordingly. And also, you will become a, a guide. If you are experienced in that, you become a guide for that. Yes. And uh, as uh, Professor said, for everything we require a checklist. Hmm. Yes, sure. So if you have proper checklist, Yes, we can achieve something and we can achieve our goal easily. For that, you need to have three concepts. That is, whatever you wanted to have or whatever you wanted to cultivate good habits, you need to have three concepts in your life. That is, first one is, you need to think. Think, plan and work. Always we used to say that. Whenever you wanted to uh, start a program or you wanted to organize an event, you need to think 10 times whether it is possible from your end, to, whether you have financial support or manpower. In all ways, in all ways, you need to think 10 times. Then you need to plan accordingly. You need to plan accordingly. Then go for work. Always, uh, like uh, we used to do, is start working. Then uh, like we, we are facing so many hurdles over there. Again, we are coming back. Yes, think, plan, work. Yes, you need to have three concepts in your life. Whenever you need to have a good program or you need to reach properly to your goal. And uh, 
uh, the professor told that uh, a healthy man a healthy man eat and drink sufficiently a healthy man eat drink and sufficiently and then he breathe and sleep comfortably is if that is there is definitely will be a healthy person that's why if you want to become a healthy man on and also you know want to be a fit is you require a good habits cultivate good habits practice regularly and then you can have anything i can say and uh, like uh, with this apart from this i wanted to convey you all whatever we had yesterday in today's session it will be recorded and uh, uploaded to the bmc youtube you can download and you can go accordingly and also we have nearly seven uh, video clippings and also the ppts from the department we are uploading asanas pranayama meditation and uh, fitness activities which we prepared we are uploading uh, mostly monday or tuesday we are uploading to the bmc youtube uh, go to bmc youtube and uh, download practice accordingly we will we'll, we'll be giving two weeks at a time and pra practice accordingly then we'll be having quiz you need to attend uh, quiz if you are through in that you'll be getting e certificate that e certificate has to be submitted to your head of the department then then only everything will be cleared this is uh, whatever the we are calling it as the non credit course uh, with this uh, i would like to thank on behalf of the management head of the institution and the department of physical education who have uh, come and uh, gave very good uh, lecture on yoga and uh, stress management sir uh, i extend thank you sir uh, uh, thank uh, you. my heartfelt uh, thanks to you thank for you. having come and uh, given a very good uh, lecture on you. yoga and uh, stress management thank you once thank again you, sir thank you thank you thank you thank you